right. Uh, let's move on to the second record here, which is the record that I listened to uh, first. And Alexander, before I go into my comments, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Yeah, you mentioned that, you know, Jimmy Dawkins used to tour, you know, in Europe as well. Interestingly enough, this album was recorded in Paris, according to Wikipedia. It is from uh, 1981. And again, I have to praise the, the sound quality here, but the feel is somewhat different. You know, the songs are longer. There are more songs that are, you know, sort of ballads. They're slow paced, you know, have this different kind of energy, uh, low energy, that is. Um, when it comes to individual tracks, first I want to start with the track You're Just a Baby Child. And. I think that I, I that I have actually heard this song before, way before I discovered Jimmy Dawkins. I'm not sure. Are you, you sure? Know. Or maybe I think you, what you heard was something similar because you know with with blues music, there's a lot of songs that use similar yeah, lyrics yeah, and yeah. riffs. For example, "Strange Woman" by Muddy Waters has a similar feel to this. If you remember that one, exactly. Maybe that's the one you heard because we we did that record on the show. That's what I thought, you know, I was wondering whether this was a cover or generally his song that I just that I've just heard before. But there you go. It's it's the similarity um, when it comes to the blues. So that song sounded kind of iconic. I probably um, I probably connected it with with Muddy Waters, but I just wasn't fully aware. Next, um, I want to ask you about a specific song that I that I really liked. It's called The Welfare Line. It is oh. slow paced and it, it's a politically themed song. Like yes, and, and you know, this is something that I wanted to talk about. On this record, his lyrics get very political and personal too, and I love it. And Welfare Line it has a really strong social and political message. Of course, this is the time when Ronald Reagan took over in the US and this is probably the time when economy in the US started started to get problematic and you know Bruce Springsteen also sang about in his Nebraska people would lose jobs a lot of jobs moved away stuff like that so here um, here uh, Jimmy Dawkins on this track and on the previous track Rough Times he sings about these social issues in Rough Times he even mentions that uh, it's the worst president that we've ever had, you know, talking about Ronald Reagan. Very straightforward. Uh, in, the, in the welfare line, though, you really feel the intensity of the suffering and pain in his voice. Uh, and the sparse arrangement of the song really accentuates this, especially the bass. There are like these very dark bass tones, and you hear that very clearly. As you mentioned, this is a very well recorded record but the guitar playing is just wow it's it, and you know the thing is the approach is so different from that previous record now here he's he plays kind of more subtly it's very exquisite very gentle sophisticated and every note adds to the emotional resonance of his vocal performance uh, the solo sounds like a person silently weeping you know the silent weeping of the poor and disenfranchised. And it just, his guitar does all the talking here, and it's, it's just as convincing as his words. So I absolutely love this one from the point of view of songwriting and playing and the arrangement. It's just so unique. Uh, that's what makes him great, I think. This is where blues kind of deviates from its usual patterns, and you really feel the blues, you know. They, they, and these are the kind of recordings why people listen to the blues, I would say. What what do you say, Alexander? Yeah, I uh, I believe that it's a very important aspect, especially with some of the mus musicians that we mentioned before on the show. You know, this pol political and social element, because at the end of the day, a lot of blues songs are sad and about you know. Poverty, your social status, sadness, love, and so on. It's, it's, it's not a happy genre, so this perfectly 
fits in and welfare line was definitely one of my highlights on this record moving on i want to single out some other songs that are more let's say that are kind of lighter in a way the song rocking soul it's spelt in a in a fun way it's r-o-c dash k-i-n dash s-o-l-e so it's really fun uh, we'll see more of these um play of words you know on the on the, on the next record that we're going to discuss but the thing that i liked about this rocking soul track is again r- the rhythm section a fantastic rhythm rhythm section and i also love the repetitive guitar which kind of kind of i don't know complemented this rhythm section so the guitar on this record apart from the solo aspect also has this great um percussion feel right oh yeah actually we didn't really talk about jimmy's rhythm playing which was also impressive on the previous record it just uh it's not just the, the solos but also his rhythm playing is so great so funky so wonderful and this is a more upbeat tune right uh, but still his playing throughout is kind of subtle it's not this in your face guitar playing that you hear on the first record but it's subtle and intense. It burns with this slow intensity, even on the more upbeat tunes. And I really like that. I read some reviews where people were trashing this kind of playing because I guess they expected him to like blow the, the roof with his playing or something like on the previous record. But I think Jimmy knew what he was doing. And I, I just listened to this record. I don't know how many times I listened to it over the last couple of weeks. Probably like... 15 times or more because it's so great and uh, especially his playing and rock and soul is another great example uh then there's pepper's music which is also a bit upbeat and it has a really cool blues riff at the beginning and um, what i like it what i like about it is how it celebrates the blues as a genre you know uh he he, he kind of uh, he sings about blues being the music for everyone. And I like this kind of very down-to-earth approach that he has to the music. For him, it's all about sharing. It's all about this communal feeling. And you can sense that in the lyrics. And, you know, this is great because it kind of steps outside the usual blues cliches. You know, like these lyrics get personal. And these lyrics... Uh, talk to the fan directly it's not one of those i woke up this morning with the blues and blah blah you know this is more more personal and uh, did you get that feeling listening to this record that he really wanted to talk to you um i think you had more insight on that Uh, mainly i'm gonna be honest mainly because i was more focused on the music you know, the guitar and the rhythm section and so on. The lyrics, yeah, I caught some moments like Welfare Line and so on. But generally, I think uh, your ear was sharper in, in that manner than mine. I, I also probably listened to this more than you did because I absolutely fell in love with this record. I don't know how many times I listened to it. And I don't think I'll stop because it's really... Uh, just probably one of the best blues records I've ever heard, if you ask me. And I know that some people might disagree because this approach here is very unusual, I think. Uh, For a lot of people, it's not what they expect from the blues. They want this kind of scorching, burning music. But this is the real blues. This is the real deal. Um, Also, another tune at the end, My Way, he gets um, a bit funky there. Did you hear that wonderful funky riff that he has going? Uh, But again, yeah? Yes, I did. And I have one specific track in mind. Mm -hmm. My Way. Fantastic funky guitar, crazy drums and That's what I'm talking about, yes. Yeah, and I I was impressed because this is probably my first ever time of hearing some funkiness in blues i have to be honest i would much more often expect that in soul music which 
in many ways it's similar to the blues but this was absolutely straightforward you know the funkiness was totally clear but, and i like that alexander i encourage you to to listen to more blues because there's a lot of funky moments in blues even uh, like people with uh, people like stevie ray vaughn for example loved putting in some funk into their blues and i think a lot of modern blues artists in per particular like to funk things up a bit so there's a lot of funk uh, in in modern blues and i think jimmy does it so perfectly here it really swings i love it and uh, again the message is like a love letter to the fans of blues he invites everyone to come to to hear him play and uh, it's a it's a clear uh, case of a man who mainly plays for the love of music rather than money and you can sense this in these lyrics uh, what he says here is if you really love the blues come on up and see me sometimes it sounds so wholesome so sweet um, my fiance Asha also loved the song and she's not a big blues fan but when she heard this, she could really relate to the sweetness of it. I don't know. You you feel like you want to sit down with this man and share a coffee with him. And he seems so sweet and so fatherly in a way. I don't know. I, I really, really love the way Jimmy sounds here. I can You're only imagine. A man crush. <laughs> hmm? Maybe. I, 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 we don't really know that much about this man, but I can imagine a very wholesome figure based on all these records. I, I just uh, I read some stories online. People who knew him said that he would, uh, for example, he would give them his old guitars as gifts and stuff like that. He was very supportive of the scene. So I, I really wish we could find more information about Jimmy Dawkins. So if any people who knew Jimmy or w saw him play or, you know, uh, or, or simply know more about him, please uh, get in touch with us. Leave some comments on our social network pages. Uh, let us know about Jimmy's life because this man and this musician deserves to be more celebrated. Let's do that. Let's, let's not allow these people to be forgotten and I don't think he will be forgotten but unfortunately and this is maybe why I, I went into that whole rant about Eric Clapton unfortunately I feel like a lot of authentic music gets overlooked uh, doesn't really get enough exposure it's always the same names that keep popping up I don't know if it's just the idleness of the world but I wish people knew m more about people like this all right, so Alexander, any other comments or did we wrap this up nicely? I, I think that we actually touched on all, all the necessary points here. So I think we're ready and set to give our ratings. I'm going to go first. My rating is 7.5 and the standard track here is, I mentioned well for line. I really liked it, but I have to go with some of these funky songs. Um, let's let's pick rock, rock and soul. How about you, Vada? All right. Um, for me, it's hard to choose one highlight because all these tracks are really great. Um, but maybe Welfare Line, just because it's such an intense moment here. It's very sad and it's good that he lightens up a bit later on but I'm so glad that he sang about these problems you know it's it sounds so authentic so real it really takes you to a certain moment in time you really understand this man you start imagining things that he might have gone through in his life and or things that people in his community went through and I love love that I think it's it's a great example of what blues should be about you know this is the real blues. This is the real deal. And that song exemplifies that perfectly. As for the ratings, I will give this one a 9. Much more assuredly uh, than on the previous record. I think that this is a phenomenal album. I love his subtle approach to playing. I love the way he reinvented his playing style. That He didn't stick with the same formula. So it's very exciting to go from one record to another 
and hear this. So yeah, an, a definite nine for me. All right, great ratings there. And now, Vlada, we're moving on to the third record that we're going to discuss. It's called Can't Check These Blues. It's also this play of, play of His, words. It's uh, a very interesting way of spelling that we already saw on the previous record we talked about. And here it's in full swing. So uh, can't is what spelled the... as K-A-N-T. Yeah. Uh, shake is spelled as S. H E C K. These as D E E S and so on. Uh, I love I love that. Um, it's like his it, Prince used to do stuff like that too. You know, had his own spelling system, and Jimmy's also uh, into this kind of stuff. Um, w what were you saying, Alexander? Yeah. yeah well, I, I just. I also wanted to show our listeners how this is spelled. And I also wanted to ask you whether you know what the correct pronunciation would be. You know, if you would move away from the usual usual pronunciation, how would this be said? Uh, hmm, I don't, I don't even want to attempt. <laughs> because I think it, maybe Jimmy wanted to reflect a certain kind of speech, you know, that I don't think we can really get right because first can of all we're not native speakers dialect? second of all we we don't speak um with that kind of we cannot really imitate it uh, so i don't know it's but i love the what, what i love what he does here with that i like how um there's a certain kind of playfulness to that and i think that's why i really like him it he seems to be this kind of very uh uh, introspective man at the same time he seems to like to to joke he seems to like uh, he seems to be a very social person you know like based on all these lyrics and everything projected through these uh, misspellings deliberate misspellings i love that uh, but uh, what we have here is another interesting blues record a very long one at that uh, Alexander, this is from the 90s, so 20 years following, more than 20 years following his debut record. Yep. What can you tell me? What kind of differences did you notice here? Okay, so here we're going back, going back, sorry, to the live feel, to the feel of being at a live gig. You know, again, I'm not sure if it was deliberate, if it was up to the, the the mixing stuff, the audio part, but it definitely felt like that and I liked it. So when it comes to when it comes to this record, I obviously had some notes and I was full of praise for the guitar yet again. And some moments were, were again really really outstanding so first i want to single out the song it's not one of the let's say opening tracks it's a bit further during the record get on the ball again another another thing that i noticed for the notice for the first time ever in blues slap bass vlada are you familiar with the the slap bass technique in the blues um, yeah, you hear it sometimes, but here I also noticed it. I, I wanted to point it out as well. Um, yeah, I was thinking about you when I heard that, you know, and I was I was hoping you would mention it. Uh, yeah, the bass player here likes to get a bit funky, and, and the whole band is really cooking. They're firing on all cylinders, and as you mentioned, there's this very live feel to this record. It's like going to a blues club and the, the music is just a uh, great a great feel this is what people want to hear when they go to a blues club right so yeah great slapping technique there but overall i think all of the musicians get kind of funky here from time to time very very well performed record but alexander i wanted to ask you what about his guitar playing did you notice any differences compared to the other two records? I did. I did. With some tracks, the guitar was absolutely stealing the show. Um, what I mean here is that some 
some of the okay so we talked about the first record where the guitar was so punchy and dynamic the second record you have you had these subtle riffs you know a uh, bit more slow paced here i want to talk about the song a love like that it has such a sweet riff you know so it, it's it, it makes you feel warm around your heart, you know, it has this lovely atmosphere and it is all colored with great singing. So the guitar was quite different there and it was still enjoyable. Uh, Rocking the Blues, another song that I, you know, want to single out when it comes to the guitar. Um, and yeah, overall, I think this record, since it's, since it's long, it had moments where I would rather praise the rhythm section like get on the ball or west side blues but on the other hand you you have tracks that were clearly dominated by jimmy's guitar so that's my take on that bottom yeah i absolutely agree with you um you know the, another thing you mentioned vocals we have a guest vocalist norma jean wallace on two tracks a love like that i think and um, another track my man loves me and you know the, here it gets kind of very soul music you know uh, nora jean is a great vocalist apparently i guess they were friends and you know um i read that all the musicians on this record were great chicago blues musicians some of the best in the city and it really shows especially the keyboard work is so good and uh, he uh, often calls out the keyboard player. He calls him Professor. So his name is Professor Eddie Lusk. And, you know, this adds to the live feeling when he says, come on, Professor, or something like that. So it's, it's a great, great celebratory record. Really cooks a lot of long songs as well uh, because he lets the band stretch out a bit. The title track in particular is an awesome nine-minute slow blues love it every mo moment of it the guitar playing um i think you perfectly described it but i also want to add something about the sound he changes his sound here there's a certain kind of more modern creamy quality to his notes they're not um, so sharp like on the earlier records but they're still very angry you can still hear that same style it's just that he added some uh, I guess he used a different setup here, and it really shows. And I like the fact that he experimented with the sound. W what did you think about that? Agreed, agreed. You know, this is this is amazing. Uh, the fact that he is able to switch between different guitar styles, and it still fits. It still, you know, makes the music sound pretty enjoyable. And obviously it stays within the blues boundaries. Yeah, so uh, quite a great blues record. However, I have to say though, and I feel kind of guilty about it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as the other two. I thought it was a really, Same here. A really good blues record. I thought that the band was absolutely stellar. Uh, but I thought that the other two records had more personality, like... Uh, they they sounded very unique. This kind of sounds like a lot of other good blues records from that period. So it's not bad by any stretch of imagination, but I just felt that if, if this was the first record that I heard by Jimmy, I'd probably think it's great, but I perhaps wouldn't spend so much time with it because it didn't inspire me the same way like Hot Wire. However, um, you know, looking at different reviews, this seems to be one of his most revered records, and for a good reason. I mean, it really, really cooks, but I just felt slightly underwhelmed by comparison to the other two. So, any, any uh, last yeah. comments here? I just want to say that you mentioned how this record is longer compared to the previous two that we discussed. It's 70 minutes long, and... Uh, to be fair, you know, d during during the listening of this record, you know, midway through, I kind of got drowsy. Kind of got lost. It. Uh, I just lost my focus, and you know, the musicianship is is great, but uh, this will probably sound wrong to to some blues fans.
fans, but uh, in my opinion, uh, listening to this album was a bit of a stretch for me. I I, I have to admit that I agree with you. Uh, it's it it drags a bit, and that's why I would take this record in sections. You know, I wouldn't listen to the whole thing at once. So play a few songs here, play a few songs there. Uh, then it makes perfect sense. You know, live, this would make perfect sense because live, you, you'd be pumped up with adrenaline. So every song would kind of uh, intensify that. But on the record, this kind of drags a bit, you know. And um, But that's the only real flaw because everything else is really well performed, I would say. It just the, the only reason why I feel the other records are better is that they have more personality, and that's all. But everything here is stellar, so you can't go wrong with this record, but maybe it shouldn't be your introduction to Jimmy. I don't know. Maybe for some people this would work as a perfect introduction. Depends what you like in your blues. Yeah. All right, Agreed. So, Agreed. so the final rating, Alexander? Okay, slightly lower... Reading this time, I'm going with a 7, and my favorite track, again, has to be some of the funky tracks. Let's see. Oh, no, actually, I'll go with A Love Like That, the sweet song with the great vocals. Vlada, back to you. All right, so you want um, some great uh, female vocals like we have here, Nora Jean Wallace, absolutely brilliant on this record. Uh I don't know. To me, I think the title track was the best one. I really felt the blues while listening to it. Very, uh, a, a slow burner, a real scorcher of a track. A great jam, nine minutes long. So, But everything here is pretty good, I would say. A really competent blues record. I would give it an eight. I think uh, it's not as brilliant as the other two, in my opinion mainly because it sounds more generic. I don't like to use this word when talking about such great musicians, but the other records really stood out as original pieces of work, something that no other blues man can do. And um, I feel that this is more by numbers, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, so yep. we've come to the end of the episode. Um, before we leave you guys i just want to say thanks everyone for your support so far especially our dear patrons you guys rock we would like to do another patron episode soon so uh, for our patrons who have the right to suggest uh, the bands please think about your next suggestion we would love to hear it from you we would love to to do another patron episode soon uh, also Alexander, I want to point out that I'm really happy with how much we've accomplished so far. I think that we've done a lot and that this uh, this podcast has been a joy to do and especially looking into all these different artists and discovering new music has been one of the best things for sure. I totally agree and dear listeners, if this sounds good to you you know all the things that vlada just mentioned head over to our social media accounts you can see uh, all the stuff that we do all the all the news all the funny stuff we are on twitter facebook and instagram the handle is sunrise pod uh, the same handle is used for our patreon page so if you want to support us you can do that for as little as one dollar per month so go to Patreon, find us, support us, and we'll see you in two weeks, guys. All the best. Write a review, and then you can share it. With the world. In any social media platform. And then your friends see it, and you can share and discover new shows together. This is Steph, instigator of Pod Rev Day, Podcast Review Day. And I'm Andy from Inspired Money. And I'm Arielle of Earbuds Podcast Collective and CastBox. We're here to tell you everything you need to know about Pod Rev Day. Which is on the 8th of every month, of every year, of every century, of every... You get it. We are posting podcast reviews as part of hashtag Pod Rev Day, Podcast Review Day. Because podcasters work their butts off and deserve to know how much they've impacted your lives. And you can do that through reviews. 
even one star feels surprisingly <laughs> good. Does it? It lets you know that people are at least listening. Don't be a passive podcast listener. Write a review and tell your favorite creator what you love about their podcast or about a specific episode. And to participate, you just need to do one review. And we'll see you every eighth of the month. PodRev Day. Because podcasters deserve to hear it. Hashtag PodRev Day. P-O-D-R-E-V-D-A-Y.